we've got a lot of people in the House that are doing things. But I am not sure that they can get this done. First of all, they don't have the Senate and they don't have control, so they can't they they can recommend that the Justice Department prosecute. But then what? They can try to get the Democratic Senate to impeach somebody. But it's not going to happen. But that's not reason for us to throw up our hands and say, oh, well, what can we do? I'm going to show you a lot of documents tonight. And every single document you will be able to access, it's open right now at thereckoningguide.com. Thereckoningguide.com. Download our Biden crime family dossier. Follow along and do your own homework on this. In this dossier, you will also find key information that will allow you to take action to finally hold the Bidens accountable. I'll explain a little bit more uh, a little later on in the program. I can't get over how the mainstream media, the Bidens and the rest of the Democratic Party are really trying to normalize everything. They're, first, they're hiding it, denying it happens. And then when it's finally everywhere, they're like, well, but that's no big deal. It is a big deal because you don't see this type of behavior outside of countries like Venezuela or China or Russia. It's insane. A president or vice president making political moves around the world that coincide with their families making millions in the same places. It is not normal. It is not American. I don't care how they try to spin it. That behavior cannot be normalized. Check this out. Tell me this is normal. Back in March, the House Oversight Committee produced bank records that revealed multiple Biden family members were receiving shady payments from China. Bank um, subpoenas reveal that less than two months after Biden left the White House in 2017, he did business with a Chinese company. Now, I love this. This wonderful little Chinese company wanted to do some business. It's, a, it's an energy company, State Energy HK. They, uh, they've uh, uh, wired just $3 million to Robinson Walker, LLC. Oh, no, first we have to go to the Shell Corporation. Here's, here's what the real money is coming from. It goes to this Shell Corporation, and then it goes to this guy, Rob Walker. Well, who the heck is Rob Walker? Well, uh, Walker uh, LLC is a limited uh, liability company in Delaware. At the time of the wire transfer, Rob Walker's business account had $159,000 in it. And then overnight, $3 million from a Chinese... What does he do? What is that LLC? The very next day, Rob, uh, Robison Walker wired $1 million to a company associated to a business partner of Hunter Biden named James Galar. So now he gets a third. Again, do we know what? We know he's an attorney, so he probably can't say anything. Right. He's I don't know what he does. Is he because he's getting a third of the money. OK, so the the Chinese government through a shell corporation takes money and gives it to him. He takes a third of it, gives it here. And then the rest of it comes here. Over the next three months, Walker would send incremental payments to multiple Biden family members in their country uh, and their companies. Uh, of course, you had Hunter and then you got James and then you have Hallie uh, and then you have the mysterious Biden. We don't know. Now, does any of this sound legitimate at all? Because what are these people? What have they done for this energy company? You might say, well, he's an expert of energy because he was in Ukraine. Uh-huh. But what about these three? What, why did this Chinese company, first of all, use a pass-through company to disperse the funds incrementally over several months? Why was it done just a couple of months after Joe Biden left office? And if Hunter didn't share any of this money with anyone else, 
Who's the mysterious Biden? Is this the way we do business in America? No, I'll tell you how we do business in America. It's, it's a lot different than that. You don't have a shell company. You just have a company, okay? There's nobody secretly behind the company. And then if you want to do business with that company and that company wants to do business, it pays you, okay? Very clear. You pay me, I'll do this. What this is, is these people have the money. These people hire these people to do. And then it's laundered through all kinds of other companies and banks. Now, let me take a step back for a second. This doesn't sound normal. So imagine you're a very powerful person. Let's say the vice president of the United States. Maybe you have had aspirations to run for president. But life is so expensive. You've got a bunch of kids, including one specific kid that's always seemed to be in trouble. You've also got a ton of grandkids, one you won't even recognize. Um, none of this is cheap, mind you. You've never really held down a job anywhere, okay? Because that's not what you do. You've been in public service. How do you amass a ton of money without anyone knowing it? How do you get around the oversight of, of you and your wife's financial information? Hmm, that's tough. Let me spitball for a second. So you'd have your problem child. If it was me, this is exactly what I would do. You'd have your problem child and maybe even your brother who exists outside the financial oversight do a deal in a country where you might have political influence in. Influence either today or possibly in the future, but you'd have to be careful. You'd have the main company you're dealing with use one of their subsidiaries or maybe even one of their shell companies. And the funds would go from the main company, then to the shell, then on through a pass-through. You know, somebody that you could really trust, and it would be good if they were an attorney so they could never testify against their client. And, and there's always close family business associates that help with these kind of deals. So you compensate, let's say, a third of the total take to them. And then you set up a series of payments from the pass-through lawyer to various family members. Again, people that exist outside official oversight. Now, I don't know if this is legal. I'm pretty sure it's not. But it doesn't even sound ethical. Have you ever heard of business deals working this way that were legitimate? This is exactly what the bank records revealed back in March. But maybe this is a one-off. They, they don't do this all the time. I mean, this would be very complicated. You know what I mean? You can't just... If, this just looks shady. Mm -hmm. So is it possible this one deal was so shady looking because the Chinese just do business differently? Sure. Okay. All right. Maybe that's possible. Sure, don't think it is, but sure, maybe that's possible. Let's look at that, okay? But last week, what just happened? Last week, the House Oversight Committee released even more information. And you're not going to believe the system they put. They amassed over $10 million from foreign companies, okay? The Biden family created a web of over 20 companies, mostly limited liability, with the majority of them created while Joe Biden was vice president. Now these, many of these companies, in fact, I think all but three, have no employees, no product, no sales, nothing. They're just companies. So either the Bidens suddenly discovered their business genius, with these companies that don't do anything, right after Joe Biden became vice president, or it's something else. What could it be? Well, the bank records that we just got revealed that not only were the Bidens receiving shady payments from China, uh, not only were they doing it in uh, Ukraine, but also now a businessman in Romania. Now, you see, this is interesting to me. Remember how Biden was focusing so heavily on corruption in Ukraine? 
Well, he was doing this while Hunter was being placed on the board of Burisma. Now, we know how that went, but it seems he was also doing the same thing in Romania. He traveled to Romania in May 2014, specifically to combat corruption. Watch. Corruption is a cancer, a cancer that eats away at a citizen's faith in democracy, diminishes the instinct for innovation and creativity. Already tight national budgets crowding out important national investments. It wastes the talent of entire generations, scares away investments and in jobs, and most importantly, it divide, denies the people their dignity. Now, I agree with all of that, but I don't think he and his family actually do. And a lot of people in Washington, I don't think, believe that.